I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes on a subject that's on a lot of people's mind, especially this week, next couple of days, people will be giving their sweethearts a present, yeah. maybe a heart full of candy, or, uh -huh. or a balloon, or a card, or maybe they'll take them out to eat, amen, Come on. and we'll talk about, you know, St. Valentine's Day, and, yeah. and Cupid, and Love, amen, <coughs> hallelujah. Love is in the air, oh. hallelujah. My, 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 I want to talk to you about love this morning. All right. Real love. Amen. True love. Yeah. Genuine love, yeah. amen. Come on. Hallelujah. Not so much like the world talks about love because right. most of the time the world uses love out of context, right. amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. They'll tell their wife they love them, then they'll say they love pizza. Well, surely you can't put those both on the same level. Amen. Hallelujah. But most of the time, the way the word love is used today in relationships, especially with the younger crowd, and it seems like it's getting more and more of soul with the older crowd as well, you could use the word lust as much as you could love. Amen. Because when the lust is gone, there ain't enough love to hold things together. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. And lust don't hold stuff together for very long. Amen. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. This may be the first time I've ever used the lyrics of a worldly song to open up a sermon with, but I'd like to do that this morning if you'll allow me to do so. There was a song out years and years ago now by one of Rock's legends, Tina Turner. And the name of the song was What's Love Got to Do With It? Amen. And some of the lyrics read like this. As a matter of fact, the chorus says, What's love got to do with it? Amen. Yeah. What's love but a second-hand emotion? And I use these lyrics this morning because this personifies the biggest part of the world's thinking on the subject of love. Amen? Yeah. This song was popular, sold millions of copies. Why? Because a lot of people could relate to it. Amen? Mm -hmm. yeah. What's love got to do with it? What's love but a secondhand emotion? What's love got to do with it? Who needs a heart when a heart can be broken? Yeah. The next time that the chorus is used, it reads like this. What's love got to do with it? What's love but a sweet old-fashioned notion? What's love got to do with it? Amen? I'd like to answer that this morning with the one word. Everything. Amen? What's love got to do with it this morning, church? Everything. Amen? God is love. Amen? He loved this world so much. The Scripture that is dear to our heart. The Father loved the world so much that He gave His only begotten Son so that you wouldn't have to die and go to hell. Amen? The Son, the love, the Son loved you so much that He was willing to die in your stead on an old rugged cross and suffer a horrid death because of love. Amen? That's what love has to do with it. You are here today because of love. Amen? You are saved today because of love. Even if you're out there today and you don't know Jesus, you still breathe today because of love. God's love. Genuine love. True love this morning. Amen? We ain't talking about lust. Amen? I've had the privilege to stand before some couples throughout the years and tie some knots. And most of them ended in a way that might made me think maybe I won't tie no more knots. Amen? But most of the time, they were young people that were really, if you brought it down, and I don't mean to hurt their feelings, they probably ain't listening this morning anyway, but if you brought it down to where the rubber meets the road, it was more lust than it was love. Amen? All right. But love will endure. Right. Oh, amen? Love will bear all things. Go with me this morning to 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter. 1 Corinthians 13, and we're going to start at the first verse, and we've dealt with this before. We've read these scriptures before. But bear with me this morning, and God's going to take us to a place maybe where you haven't seen it in this way, hallelujah, before. 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, and the first verse. The Apostle Paul writing to the church of Corinth says, Though I speak with the tongues, you want to know how important love is this morning. 
Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity. The word charity there in the Greek is agape, which is unconditional love. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and have not charity or love, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I can remove mountains and have not charity. Remember, if I have not love, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity or love suffereth long. It is kind. It, is not, it envies not according to the Word of God. Charity vaunteth not itself, it is not puffed up. It doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Oh, isn't that wonderful this morning? Isn't that beautiful? Love doesn't seek its own. Amen. Love seeks the welfare of others. Jesus didn't step down from the throne in glory for His own self. Amen. Amen. He stepped down from the... What caused this man that walked this earth for 33 and a half years to hang on the cruel cross of Calvary and look down at those that had crucified Him and spit on Him and mocked Him and crowned Him with the crown of thorns and stuck a spear in His side? What caused this man... To look down on this crowd and say, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Love caused this man to do that. Oh, wow. Amen. We're talking about love this morning, true love, genuine love. Listen to what it says. It rejoiceth not. Verse 5 says, Doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own. It is not easily provoked, it thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endures all things. Whatever happened to death do us part. Amen? See, lust can't endure. Amen? If you fall into love with somebody or what you think is love and it's actually lust, when the lust is gone, there will be no love. Come on. Amen? Right. If you marry a woman because you desire her, and today they don't even do that. They just have each other. Don't have to. You know, somebody said, "Why well, buy the cow if you're getting the milk for free?" Amen. In the world of the loose living society, can I preach this morning? In the loose living society that we live in today, well, let's don't get married. Let's just live together. Yeah. Amen. You're weirder today if you don't do anything before you get married than you are if you're doing stuff. Amen. And you ain't married. Right. Amen. Used to be. Women saved themselves for their husband. Amen. Now they've had a dozen partners before you ever marry them. Same thing with the men. There used to be something called men having chastity. Amen. There certainly used to be something about saving yourself for the right person, but not anymore. Many women like dogs jump from one partner to the other. Amen. Why? Not because of love. We hear people say, oh, I love you, and the next week they can't stand each other. That wasn't love. Amen. We hear people say, I can't stand to live without you because I love you. Yeah, you lust her. You lust after her. And once you've had her, once she don't look so good, you see love endures. But lust will wear out. Once she starts sagging in places she used to not sag, you won't like her as good as you used to. You'll see somebody else that ain't sagging. <coughs> Amen. We're talking about love this morning. The difference between love and lust. Love endures, but lust will fade away. As your natural beauty begins to decline, so will their feelings towards you, young lady. You better find you somebody that didn't marry you for your body or your looks. Amen? Find you somebody. You see, lust will walk away and leave you dying, but love will sit by your bedside as cancer eats your insides out, and you ain't got no hair left, and you ain't got no weight left, and you ain't got no looks left, and you ain't got no sex appeal left, but love will sit there by your bedside and hold your hand and not leave. That's why I tell you today the world doesn't have much of a, much of even a, a, a hint at what love really is. Amen. Love endures. Love bears. I'll go a step further. Love forgives. Amen. You don't stay married for very long a time if you ain't willing to forgive and forget what your partner does. Amen. Because sooner or later every one of us is going to let each other down. Come on. I've been married for 25 years. <clears throat> 
my Lord. And she's had to forgive me a lot of times. Amen. More times than I've had to forgive her. But she forgives because she loves. Mm -hmm. Love forgives. Love bears all things. Mm -hmm. Love endures. Lust will fade away. Mm -hmm. Amen. <coughs> it beareth all things. It believeth all things. It hopeth all things. Endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, how many people love prophecies? Amen. It's powerful, isn't it? Yes. Prophecies are powerful, but they will fail. One day there will be no more prophecies. <clears throat> there will be no more tongues. Amen. Right. How many people love speaking tongues? I speak in tongues every day. Amen. I speak in tongues every day. Well, preacher, I don't believe. Well, you done came too late. Tell me. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You know, you you like you like you, you walk up to the old farmer that's sitting under the shade tree with watermelon juice running down his chin. Say that thing ain't no good. You done came too late. He done tasted of it, amen. And he knows it's good. I done tasted of the Lord, and I know that the Holy Ghost is good. So you might as well shut up and go waste your time on somebody else because I already know that I know that I know that it's good. Come on. Now, is there abuse of it? Sure, there is. <clears throat> is there a, is there a counterfeit of it? Sure, there is. But there's a genuine this morning, amen? And if your preacher's telling you anything but that, he don't know his Bible. Because nowhere in the Bible does it say anything about the, that the speaking in tongues was only for the day of Pentecost and that was it. Amen? Right. Matter of fact, the Apostle Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen? Right. I love to speak in tongues, but one of these days, there'll be no reason, no need to speak in tongues. Amen? The Bible says that where there are prophecies... They will fail. They shall fail. Whether there, for there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. <clears throat> for we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come. Now listen, he's still talking about love. He's still talking about charity. Then that which is in part shall be done away. You see, we only, we only love within our human capacity <clears throat> here on this earth. And what I'm trying to say by that is we don't really comprehend or understand love in its fullest measure, but one day we will. Amen? Right. Because that which is in part shall be done away with. Amen. Paul said when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I spake, he says, I uh, put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. We now know in part, but then... Shall I know even as I am known? And now by the faith, hope, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is charity, agape love. The greatest of these, greater than faith, greater than hope, amen, is charity, agape love, amen. Greater than hope, greater than faith. He said these three, but the greatest of the three between hope, faith, and charity is charity. We're talking about love this morning. The kind of love that would cause an all-holy God to send His only begotten Son into a world that He knew ahead of time would reject Him. Do you think that God woke up this morning surprised That the world as a whole, not the entirety of it, but the largest percent of it, has rejected the sacrifice that he made. No, he knew this. And in spite of this, he gave anyway. You see, love gives expecting nothing in return. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen? Come on. Love makes sacrifice. Yeah. Not because of what it can gain self, but what it can do for someone else. Amen? We're talking about love this morning. For God so loved, not like you love pizza. Amen? Not like you think you love your neighbor. But for God so loved. How many people this morning, if we really were truthful, and it came down to where they said, listen, we're either going to kill your neighbor or we're going to kill your son. You can give us your son. I'll use Brother Tyler as an example this morning. I like the people who live next door to me. We don't have any problems at all. Amen. But if I had to choose this morning, 
between losing him and losing my neighbor, I'll be truthful with you, it ain't much of a choice for me. Yeah. Amen? What do you think about God? The Bible says, Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for a friend. Amen? Yeah. God, not for friends. You wasn't his friend. Amen? You were at enmity with him. The Bible says the flesh is enmity with God. The carnal mind is enmity with God. God's love goes farther than the statement, no greater love hath any man than he lay down his life for a friend. Amen? Because you were not his friend. The Bible says while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Why? Because of love. Amen. Love that we can't comprehend this morning. That's right. Amen? Love that we can't comprehend. We don't understand this morning. Oh, hallelujah. How God can give the best He's got for a religious world, my goodness, that would spit on Him, that would call Him a blasphemer, that would call Him Beelzebub, that would call Him the devil, that would nail Him to a tree, that would mock Him as He died and gave His last breath for them. He, they would spit and curse on Him. Come on. Yet God did this because of His love. Love. Salvation for mankind was birthed out of love. Amen. The Bible says God is love. <clears throat> Even in God's judgment, it's His love. Amen? Come on. Even God's judgment is birthed out of His love. God has no hatred for you. Right. God has no hatred for you. Nothing but love. Come on. Amen? Nothing but love. And love beareth all things and endures all things. So what does love have to do with it this morning? Everything. Everything. You're born again today because of love. Amen. You're not on your way to hell today because of love. Amen. If you're out there and you're lost and you have not accepted Jesus Christ, you've got another chance today because of love. Because of God's mercy and His compassion and His grace that is birthed out of love. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Go with me this morning to the Old Testament. And I'll give you a minute to find it because it might take you a minute. To the book of Hosea. The first chapter. <clears throat> During this time, the book of Hosea, we find that Israel is backslidden. It seems as if when you read through the pages of the Old Testament, you find Israel was backslidden more times than she wasn't. Amen. But we find in the book of Hosea, God has prepared His prophet and He's getting ready to show Israel a picture of love, His love for them. Not only a picture of His love for them, but He's getting ready. Aren't you glad this morning when God shows you pictures of things? <clears throat> you know, the, 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 not the Bible, but the world says that a, 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 a picture is worth a thousand words. And many times preachers will use demonstrations and some of them that I've seen as a kid still stick in my mind today because someone showed me a picture of what they were trying to say. Amen. I remember Brother Dudley's church, the Church of God in Ireland over there. The night he had a coffin in front of the church there, sitting there in front of the pews and had everybody get up and walk around and look down in there. And there was a mirror in there. You saw yourself. That sticks with you. Amen. Amen. So God's getting ready to show Israel their condition and His love for them. And Israel was in a mess. Probably about as bad a mess as they'd ever been in. Hosea, the first chapter. We're going to start in the second verse. I think I told you the third verse. but We're going to see... Everybody loves a love story. Amen. Everybody likes a love story. Romeo and Juliet... Amen. That's one of the more famous ones. I bet you never heard of the love story between Hosea and Gomer. That don't sound as romantic, does it? But that's what God chose to use. The Bible says the beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea, and I'm in Hosea, the first chapter, second verse. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms. For the land hath committed great whoredoms departing from the Lord. Now I don't know about you, but it ain't exactly the command you want from God when you go looking for a wife. 
Go find you a prostitute. Amen? And I ain't sure that Hosea was all that thrilled about the arra this arrangement because I know I wouldn't be. But in this passage of Scripture, God is trying to show His people by His prophet the situation that is going on in the spiritual realm. The fact that Israel has followed after her own whoredoms. That she had prostituted herself. Amen? She had showed herself on the highest mountain to the false gods and to the things of that day. Idol worship of that day. So God speaks to Hosea and He says, you go find you a wife. And no doubt, my goodness, this is not something that somebody would call, call, you know, that's just a marriage made in heaven right there. Yeah. But think about it. Think about God's relationship with you. Would you consider that a marriage made in heaven today? Amen. Who's getting the better end of the deal? It ain't God. Amen. You're getting the better end of the deal. Amen. Right. So Hosea, God says, you're going to find you a prostitute. Amen. Now it's very difficult for us to understand the spiritual condition of that time, but you can find a whole lot of it in this book that we're not going to deal with today, but I'll share with you the kind of condition that Israel was in. If you go over to chapter 4 and beyond that, you'll find mostly in chapter 4 but that they had no faithfulness, there was no kindness, there was no knowledge of God. There was swearing, there was deception, there was murder, there was sexual immorality. The prophets and the priests were corrupt. No, no, wait a minute, y'all. I ain't describing America today. Amen. I'm talking about Israel, but that sure sounds awful lot like the world as we know it today. Amen. Amen. The priests no longer taught the knowledge of God. The religious leaders had become opportunist and they were using greed, profiting from the sins of the people. My goodness. Did I get this off of TBN this morning? No, I got this here out of God's Word. Come on. There was harlotry. There was drunkenness. Yeah. The people were idol worshipers. And virtually on every hill and under every tree at that time in that land there was idolatry and whoredoms, spiritually whoredoms taking place under the nose of God. Mm. And not only were they sinning, yeah. they were flaunting their sin in the face of a holy God. Yeah. Come on. Does that remind you of anybody today? Amen? America. America. And I'd say America because that's where I live. I don't know what's going on anywhere else, but I know in America we just had two or three states say it's all right for homosexuals to get married. Right. That what the states that had put in bans that they had asked the people to vote whether they wanted to okay homosexual marriages or not. Oh. And the people said, no, we don't want homosexual marriages. Oh. Then the court system stepped in and said, oh no, wait a minute. Oh, you great. can't take away their right. What about the right of the people to stand up and vote for what they want in their state, in their nation, in their country? Come on. Activist judges taking away the very rights of the people and saying you can't have your rights because we want these people to be able to get married. Yeah. Amen. Come on. So I can't talk about other countries, but I can talk about America. Amen. I can talk about homosexuals carrying their picket signs right. down the streets of Washington, D.C. saying we have a right. We're gay and we're proud of it. Right. That's what's going on in Israel. Amen. Amen. That's what I'm they wasn't going just sinning. They flaunting their sin right. in the face of a holy God. Wow. And listen to me. God's mercy allow you to get away with that for a time. Right. For a while. But sooner or later, God's Spirit won't strive with judgments coming. Amen. Wow. I know God's all loving. I know He's all merciful. But one of these days, wow. your time to repent is going to run out. And you're going to be left facing the judgment of God. Amen. That's Amen. Truth. That's the truth. And Israel getting ready to face a payday. Yes. There's a payday coming. Amen. The the road. Israel getting ready to face a payday. Right. They're flaunting their sin before God and God's trying to woo them here. Right. He's trying to show them Amen. not just a picture of the way that they were living, uh -huh. but also a picture of His love. Whoa. So what's Hosea do? The Bible says in the third verse that Hosea went and took Gomer or Domar, some Fancy preachers call her. I call it. I call her Gomer. Amen. Yeah. The daughter of the blame, which conceived and bare him a son. Now think about this. The prophet of God. Can you imagine the ridicule? 
Can you imagine the people that were watching this man's life? Mm. Oh, did you hear about old Hosea? Mm. He went and married that prostitute Gomer. Mm. Not only that, now they're having children. Mm. Amen. That's what Israel had done. Yeah. Israel had laid in the beds of idols and false gods and bare to themselves children of other gods. Oh, my goodness. God's showing them Amen. a picture of what's going on here. Come on. Oh, isn't it, isn't it powerful how God's Word re relates not just to that day, but this one today? Yeah. It never grows old. That's it. Amen. And what happens? She bare him a son. Mm -hmm. And verse 4 says, The Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel. Yeah. For yet a little while I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Je Jehu mm. and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Still talking about the judgment of Israel that's pending. You know what Jezreel means? At the time Jezreel was a city. It was a place to that time that was most of the wickedness was birthed from that place. Mm. Could it be that God was saying, Israel, your relationship with false gods has birthed the most ungodly and wicked things known to mankind? You're waiting to bail them. Your forsaking of me and going after other gods has birthed such ungodly things that this first child's name, Jezreel. Mm. Israel, you're wicked to the core. Yeah. Listen to this. <clears throat> Drop down to verse 6. It says, and again, again she conceived and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, Call her name. Loru Hamai. I ain't going to say that one again. For I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel. I will utterly take them away. Now that second child's name comes from two Hebrew words. Lo in the Hebrew is a negative and it means no, it means not. Ruhama means to have pity. So in other words, God was saying no more pity. Amen. No more mercy. Right. It's time to pay the piper. Yes. It's time to reap of the wicked seed that you have sown. Come on, preach. Oh, listen to me. I know this ain't popular this morning, but sooner or later, you can live as you please, but you must pay the cost. Sooner or later, brothers and we've got to pay the cost. That's it, brother. If we don't turn to Jesus now, we'll pay for it later. Amen. Amen? Yeah. Because that's the way things are set up. You can't. Oh, I love what Brother Slee said this morning. You might get close, but you ain't going to make it right. unless you come through the door. Right. That's Jesus Christ. Amen. Right. Not the name of Muhammad. Not the name of AA. Jesus Christ and Him crucified or you don't get in. Come on. So God's saying now, you get into the place of judgment. Judgment's coming. Uh -huh. Judgment's coming. Amen. Yes, sir. So she bears him a daughter. For I will have no more mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will undertake, but I will utterly take her, take them away. But I will have the mer I will have mercy upon Judah and will save them by the Lord their God, and will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, nor by horses, nor by horsemen. Now when she had weaned this girl child that she had had, no sooner did she do that, she conceived and she bore a son. Difference in this child and the other two is this one didn't belong to Hosea. Listen to the name that God says to give to this child. This said God called his name Loami, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. Come on. So God shown, listen, you've Forsaken me, you've turned your back on me. Now you've created whore. You you've went a whoring. You went after somebody else. You've taken to yourself strange husbands. See, God always likened His relationship with Israel as a husband and a wife. Amen. Come on. So now, man, this child, what is say? Loami, meaning not mine. And this name takes on more significance whenever you read here how that Hosea's marriage. 
And the relationship between God and Israel are parallel here. And God's trying to show these people a picture of what is going on. And we find that Gomer did not forsake her whoring ways. She went and found her somebody else to lay with. And she has a baby while married to the prophet of God that does not belong to him. Yeah. Not mine. Not my people. My goodness. Come on. Listen to this. The first child is named Jezreel. The second, Lo Ramah and Lo Ami. Amen. And Hosea's story continues in chapter 2. If you go to chapter 2, verse 5, he explains it more. It says, For their mother hath played the harlot. She that conceived them hath done shamefully. For she said, I will go after my lovers and give my bread and my water and my wool and my flax and my oil and my drink. Therefore, behold, I will hedge up the way with thorns and make a wall that she shall not find her paths. And she shall follow after her lovers. Talking about Israel. I know this is happening in Hosea and Gomer's life, but this is a picture. God said, I want to show Israel what's happening through the life of my prophet and this woman of the night. This prostitute, she has gone after her own lovers. That's what Israel had done. That's what America has done. A nation that was once founded upon the Word of God now has went a whoring after gods like Buddha and Allah and all the other religious and the, the, the other religions and false gods that there are out there. Come on, preach. She shall follow after her lovers. I go you a step farther than that. We talk about America all day. And, oh, amen. What about the church? That's it, brother. Amen. What about the church? Yeah. What about the God of Mammon that the church has went for a whoring after? Amen. Yeah. What about the God of Mammon that the lover of money? Amen. What about that one that the church has went after and decided it's better to have money than it is to have the Spirit of God? It's better to have a crowd than it is to have the will of God or the Word of God in your midst. Come on, Come on brother. Preach. So he's describing what happened to the relationship of Hosea and Gomer, but he's also talking about how it's happened with Israel. He's showing them a picture. Yeah. She shall follow after her lovers, Come on. but she shall not overtake them. That's right. She shall seek them. You see, this is what sin always does to you. Mm -hmm. Always leaves you wanting more. Mm -hmm. Always leaves you feeling like you haven't got what you wanted. Come on. She shall seek them, but she not, shall not find them. Mm -hmm. Then shall she say, I will go and return to my first husband. Yeah. For then was it better with me than now. Does that remind you of anybody we read about in the New Testament? The prodigal son, how he went out mm -hmm. and spent all that he had. Listen, sin effects are still the same today as they've always been. Amen. Take you farther than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you more than you want to pay. It'll leave you in bad, bad trouble. And that's exactly what it did to Gomer, Hosea's wife. Amen. Come on. She followed after her lovers. And God's trying to say, listen, Israel, this is what's going to happen to you. She followed after her lovers. She could not overtake them. Did you hear what it said that she did? I will go after my lovers, verse 5. It says that give me my bread and my water and my wool and my flax and my oil and my drink. Mm. <laughs> I'll go after somebody I think can please me better than the prophet that I'm living with. That's the kind of attitude she had. She couldn't get away from her wandering ways. Mm. Same way with Israel. Amen. Come on. Listen to this. She'll go after her lovers, but she'll not overtake them. She shall seek them and not find them. And then she shall say, I will go and return to my <clears throat> first husband. It was better then with me than it is now. And I'm sure that's how Gomer felt once she got in the situation that she got into. Because we'll read in a minute that sin did to her what it does to everyone else. It raped her. It left her broken and undone. Not even wanted by mankind. It says, For she did not know that I gave her corn and wine and oil and multiplied her silver and gold which they prepared for Baal. Now, I don't know what you get out of verse 8 there, but this is what I got out of it. You can make a note of it and chew on it for a while and see if you get the same thing. God said, I gave you the riches and you took the riches and you used them to offer them to Baal. I gave you the cattle, 
but you took the cattle and you offered them as a sacrifice to a false god. Oh, what's God do for us? He gives us the energy to do things, and what do we do? We use it for the world instead of Him. He gives us a job, and what do we do? Instead of giving Him 10%, 10%, Brother Rodney, I'm going to fall down on top of you. 10%. Let me ask you something this morning. If I made a deal with you and I said, all right now, I'm going to give you a job and you're going to make $200 a week. I'm going to let you keep 180 of it. All you got to do is give me 20. How many people in here would like that arrangement? Amen? Amen? How many people like it today if I said, I'm going to give you $500 and all I want back out of it is 50? Come on. But instead of giving God what His Word says for us to give, we take that money and it's offered on the altar of another God. Yeah. Oh my goodness. I know that getting me in trouble this morning. But it's the truth anyway. God said, I gave you the corn. I gave you the oil. I gave you the wine. I gave you the riches. I gave you the cattle. And what you do with them? You sacrificed them on the altar of another God. Right. Oh my goodness. And we can sit back and look at this situation today and think, my goodness, He should have just wiped them off the face of the earth. Yeah, the same thing can be said about us. The same thing can be said about you. That's it. When you look at yourself and compare yourself to an all-holy, all-knowing, all-righteous God, mm. and then look at your mess. Mm. But because of His love. Yeah. Because of His love. Yeah. He didn't cast you away. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. What comes next in this story isn't completely clear. But it seems that sometime after the birth of the third child that Hosea and Gomer's marriage fell apart and she left him for good. She walked away and didn't come back. Because we find in chapter 3, this will be the last chapter that deals with their relationship. We find in chapter 3 that even though while Hosea goes on several more chapters and you can read the whole book, the story of their relationship comes to a close in this chapter right here. <clears throat> and this is going to show us a picture that even though Gomer had not changed, she was the same old as she had been before. Oh, maybe she had changed for a little while. Maybe when the first two children came, but then she got restless and she wanted to go have a good time, go back to the ways that she had before. It's important to note that during this time, Hosea never gave up on her. Hosea being a picture and a type of God, he didn't give up on her. He didn't quit loving her. Yeah. Tell Billy how you know that. Listen to what happens in chapter 3. I'm getting ready to close. The Bible says, Then said the Lord unto me, Go yet, love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress according to the love of of the Lord toward the children of Israel, who took to other gods and loved flagons of wine. Listen to what it says about Hosea. So I bought her, talking about Gomer, yeah. the prostitute. I bought her for 15 pieces of silver. Now at that time, the price of a slave was 30 pieces of silver. You can find that in the book of, I think it's Exodus. Yeah. So we find Gomer, who at one time, according to some historians, this is not in the Bible, but was well known and came at a high price. Now we find Hosea finds Gomer used up, broken down, so much so that she doesn't even bring the price of a slave. For 15 pieces of silver he can buy her for half the price of a good slave. Why? Because he finds her torn down, broken down, left on the scrap heap of humanity, and nobody has any use for her anymore. And that's what God was telling Israel. That's the way the false gods you follow will leave you. The enemy, which is the devil, will leave you broken down and raped and beat up and abused and so worthless that nobody will want you. Come on, preach. And that's how he found Gomer. Right. And can you imagine? Can you imagine what she must have thought? And Gerald Crabb wrote a song about this several years ago, and a beautiful song, and it portrays the story very well, except for one fact. 
in the song he portrays this bidding process. And he portrays how, I think the song says, and from their lips, the bids were high. No, they weren't. She was going cheap. She's going for half price because she was damaged goods. After the devil gets through with you, that's how you'll feel. You'll feel like damaged goods. Amen. Oh, but thank God there was our Hosea that came forth out of the virgin's womb by the name of Mary and said, I know they're used up. I know nobody wants them, but I love them enough that I'll pay the ultimate price on the cross to redeem them. Hallelujah. Talking about love. Oh, my Lord, my Lord, my Lord. So Gomer, she sees Hosea. And maybe she thinks, oh no, yeah. he's bought me. I've, I've abused him. I've mistreated him. I've cheated on him. I've turned my back on him. I've caused his name to be drugged through the mud. Now maybe he's going to buy me so what? So he can kill me? So he can use me as a slave? So he can destroy me like I've almost destroyed him? No doubt some of those thoughts had to go through her mind. But thank God, as the Bible tells us in John, God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through him the world might have life. Hosea went that day not to condemn Gomer, not to destroy her, but he brought her to restore her back to the position she once had as the prophet's wife. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of love. Because of love. So he pays for her and he takes her home with him. My Lord. What a story of love. Amen. And what a picture of what Jesus did for us. All right. Many of you this morning that listen to this, maybe at some time or another you were at the Father's house and living with the Father, but you decided that you'd go somewhere else. You, yeah. Maybe you got your eyes off of Jesus and you thought, well, I'll take my eyes off for a few minutes, but a few minutes turned into an hour. Yeah. Hours turned into days, days turned into weeks, weeks turned into months, and maybe it's been years. Come on. And now that you've strayed so far, you feel like the prodigal son laying in the hog pen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You feel like you're not even worthy mm -hmm. to be called a son, but maybe I can just work for him. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe I can just be a servant. Mm -hmm. Oh, my Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. <laughs> you feel like today you looked in the mirror and you didn't see. You didn't see the wife of a prophet. You saw Gomer, the prostitute. Mom. You knew that you had slept around. You've been abused. Maybe, maybe the devil's left you with AIDS today. Amen? All the fun you thought you was having with all the partners that you had yeah. has left you broken and used up and nobody wants you. Oh, I got news for you today. I know somebody that wants you. Amen. I know somebody that loves you enough that he paid the price to buy you back from the enemy. Hallelujah. Amen. Because of love. Because of His great love, He lifted me up. Amen. He brought me up out of the miry clay. Because of His great love, we can go to Him today and say, Father, I've sinned. And He won't stand there and condemn us, but He'll put His arms around us and say, Bring the robe. Kill the fatty calf. My son that was dead is alive again. He was lost, and now he's found. Amen. So just as the prophet went and bought back his wife. Mm -hmm. Oh, and she was in a pitiful mess. God has paid a price for you today. That's right. Amen. Amen. And I know the enemy will tell you, well, God don't want you back. Oh, yes, he does. Right. Amen. Maybe you out there today, you ain't never known the Lord. Right. You ain't never. I got news for you. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Amen. Right. For God so loved the world. He didn't say the Jews. 
Amen. I realize that we call the Jews God's chosen people, and I don't argue that fact. Amen. They have been throughout the ages of time. But it doesn't say in John the third chapter, the 16th verse, for God so loved the Jews, that he or the God so loved the whites, that he gave his own. God so loved this sect or this people, this religious sect here. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, and he gave his son out of love. Come on. Love. Amen. Love. Right. We're talking about love today. Come on. Amen. Not lust. Right. But love. Amen. Love. So God was telling Israel through the story of Hosea and Gomer, you've sinned, you've blasphemed, yes. you've fallen to other gods. Come on. But I still love you. Amen. Isn't that powerful? Yes, sir. Isn't that powerful this morning? Yes. Isn't that powerful? Amen. Love never fails. Right. It believeth all things. It hopeth all things. It endures all things. Amen. Right. Talking about God's love. Amen. Hallelujah. Right. My goodness. Think about that this week. Chew on that. Think about how much God loves you. That's right. Think about the story of the prophet and the prostitute. Amen. Amen. Wow. How that he took her into his house and mm -hmm. she still did him wrong, yet his love for her. Right was still great enough and his love for God was still great enough that he went down and he bought her back. Mom. He said, I'll help you. No. I'll pour in the oil and the wine. Yeah. I'll restore you back. Not to be my servant, but to be my wife. Hallelujah. So what's love got to do with it today? Everything. Amen. Amen. Thank God for His love. Someone else this morning have something.